In this lesson, we will be talking about simple random sampling, and we will also be learning how to use a random number table. I talked about in my last lesson the importance of um, pulling a sample that truly represents your population, and there are specific do's and don'ts as you select a sample. So a simple random, simple random sampling is the process in which we select a random sample. And a simple random sample is the sample selected from the simple random sampling process. It's always hard for me to say that. Simple random <clears throat> sampling process. So one is the process and one is the result, basically. And then what is the problem with having a non-representative sample? This is probably pretty logical. Uh, if you have a non-representative sample, then you cannot draw valid conclusions about your population. So uh, invalid conclusions or biased conclusions are drawn about the population. So a non-representative sample creates bias. And this is really important as you read studies or read articles that you look for these biases in their methodology. So in most papers, probably all statistical studies, they have a methodology. It's important that you read through that. It's supposed to be very specific. It's important that you read through that to be able to decide if you even want to use the study in your research first in the first place. So if you are reading the study and you see that there was obvious bias, then I would be very cautious about the conclusions that they drew in the paper. What are some examples of selection bias? Um, one of the most popular or most common selection bias is that of convenience. So maybe you pulled a sample of the people who were closest to you in location. Uh, or, you know, maybe I wanted to do a study and my sample was the people in my class. That would be a sample of convenience. They were close to me, it was easy to do, and it was convenient. Another one would be exclusion. For example, if you contact everyone in the phone book or something like that, phone books are pretty small nowadays. If you contact everyone in the phone book with a landline, while you may be able to talk to everyone with a landline, how many people actually have a landline? Or how many people are home when you called? Or how many people pick up the phone when, you, you know, so it's like you can exclude a certain portion of the population or your sample when you choose things like that. Uh, I had a little picture here I wanted to pull up. Let me see if I have space to put it on here. I thought it was a pretty good picture of some types of selection bias. And hopefully you can see that. One of them is pre-screening. So you went ahead of time and you screened who you wanted to sample. Uh, Self-selection, if you just chose who you wanted to be in your sample. Selection from a specific area. If you were um, trying to draw some data or draw some conclusions, figure out, do a study, that's what I'm trying to say, about the people in your neighborhood and you only canvassed one block of your neighborhood, then that's pretty exclusive uh, exclusion and survivorship basis. So maybe the only people that you know will be successful in your study are the people that you <laughs> study. Um, and then 
So in order to mm, prevent bias, selection bias, we have things like random number tables to help us select a truly random sample. And so these random number tables, um, what's the word? What is the word? Create. It's not the word I'm looking for, but I can't think of it. The opportunity. It's not what I'm going for. I can't remember the word, but uh, for what is the word? Not it's the opposite of prevent. <laughs> I can't remember it for um, selecting a truly random sample. It allows, opposite of prevent, it allows. Um, and so what happens here is, let's say for example, we want to gather data on all of the students at a community college. Then what we would do is we would get a list of students who were enrolled at a community college and we would number the students from one to whatever, 2,000, 3,000, 17,000, however many students are there. We would maybe put them in alphabetical order. We would number them from one to infinity, whatever the last number would be. And then we would use a random number table to select numbers and then look at our list to see which students are associated with those numbers. And then you would go through and you would try to contact those students and gather data on those students. If a student doesn't respond to you or you can't get a hold of them or whatever, then you would do another random sample to pull more students into your sample. So maybe you're trying to gather a sample of 100 students. And so you use a random number table to select 100 different names. You're actually selecting numbers, but the numbers are associated with names. And you are only able to contact 80 of them. Then you would pull another random sample from the random number table to find more students. And you want to keep using this random, this simple random sampling so that your sample is truly random. It's not based on what was convenient to you. Larger samples produce more precision and less variation from sample to sample. So maybe you're going to pull three samples of size 100. So if you look at your three different groups, if they're truly random, then they should be pretty similar in nature when we uh, use our descriptive measures. And the larger the sample, as long as it is truly random, the larger the sample, the more precise our information is that we get from that sample. So if your sampling method is biased to begin with, then taking a larger sample of biased <laughs> subjects does not reduce bias. So if I have a class of 10 and I decide to survey those 10 because it's convenient and someone comes along and says, uh, well, your sample's too small. And I'm like, oh, okay, then I'll use my class of 40. That's still biased. It's still convenience biased. And so you don't wanna do that. Just because it's bigger doesn't make it more accurate. It has to be truly random for it to be accurate. I have an example of a random number table here. Uh, there should be one in your textbook. It's like a glossy page usually. And um, that's what you're usually gonna use. But if you don't have that, you can Google this random number table. There's lots of them in the images. I pulled this from Google images. So if you don't have one with you, there you go. Um, also usually in your homework system, there's one that you can pull up to use. And you can see here that they are random numbers. And one of the methods that you can do is close your eyes or look away and put your finger somewhere. That got kind of messy, but it looks like it's about here. And that's kind of your starting point. And then from that starting point, you can go down selecting numbers, or you can go over selecting numbers, you can go up selecting numbers, whatever. Random is good. It is random, so you and I might do something totally different. 
And since it's random, maybe you closed your eyes and you selected a different starting space. That should be the case because it should be random. You and I might be getting, should be getting totally different samples because it's supposed to be random. And the idea here, let's see, use a random number table to select 10 numbers. This is a small sample, but for the sake of the notes, we'll go with 10, between one and a thousand. This is the key here. Oh, uh, I forgot. So random sampling allows for generating, generalizing from a sample to a larger population. I missed that, sorry. Okay, back to this. What's important here is we're selecting numbers from one to a thousand. So the biggest number that we can select would be a thousand, which means that is a one, two, three, four digit number. So we're gonna be looking for, um, we're gonna be circling four digit numbers because that's the biggest number we can choose. And this is pretty involved, it takes a minute. I'm starting here. I'm gonna make this smaller. This is my starting point, it's four digits. 6,002 is above 1,000. So I cannot use it in my sample. And then I'm gonna work my way down, circling four digit numbers until I find 10 numbers between one and 1,000. So I found one. And you're just gonna repeat this process until you find 10. And it usually takes a while. Found another one. So I want to encourage you to pause it and try this on your own to get 10 numbers. And then I'll do it also. Okay, surprisingly, that takes a really long time. You can see I ended up going all over my table in a really random way. Uh, if you get a number that repeats, throw that number out and keep going. So you should have 10 numbers here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, should have 10 numbers. And if we use my example of uh, listing the students who are enrolled and numbering those students, then we would go to the, the, those numbers and we would use the names associated with those numbers. So that is how you use a random number table and a little bit about simple random sampling. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'd be happy to help. See you in the next one.